Roman syncretism. During the expansion of the Roman Empire, the religious customs of various cultural groups were not all disregarded by Rome, but became merged with their own pantheon. Roman deities were paired together with regional gods, a process known as syncretism. A good example of syncretism can be found at the remains of a temple dedicated to Sulis Minerva at Bath in Somerset, United Kingdom. This video will discuss the archaeological evidence and interpretations from Bath, which allow an understanding of the Roman social and political principles behind syncretism and how it was utilised at cult sites such as Sulis Minerva. Bath is situated on a bend in the River Avon, surrounded by limestone scarps. Before the Roman conquest, the area would have been marshland, covered thick with vegetation and intersected by streams. Archaeological evidence shows that this location had been visited since the Mesolithic, and the reason for this is due to the natural hot springs that emerge here. The local Britons believed that the goddess Sulis presided over these springs. Although the origin of Sulis is unclear, Roman documentation suggests the deity was purely local and dated to at least the Iron Age. Little is known about the religious practices of the local inhabitants before the Roman conquest, and what is known mainly comes from the Roman classical documentation. Britannia was said to be linked culturally to the continent, and Caesar wrote that the Gaulic tribes were superstitious people who worshipped the forces of nature and sacrificed humans in open-air sites. Towards the end of the 1st century AD, Tacitus wrote that the Britons held the same beliefs and customs as the Gauls. Archaeologically, sacred open sites are hard to locate, and no anthropomorphic representation of deities appear in Britain before the Roman period, suggesting that deities mainly resided in open spaces and ritual places. Pre-Roman archaeology in Britain does show that valuable objects were deposited as votive offerings to appease or ask favours of the deities at sites such as springs. At Bath, a hoard of Iron Age coins was discovered, deposited as an offering at the hot springs. Shrines do appear in the archaeological record of southern Britain during the late Iron Age. Some were round structures, like at Harlow, Essex, and others were rectangular or square, similar in style to Gallo-Roman temples across the Channel. It is possible that an Iron Age shrine existed at Bath, although pre-Roman archaeology was mostly destroyed during the construction of the Roman temple and bathing complex. After the invasion of Britain in AD 43, the location of Bath was used by the Romans as an access in the military communications network. The Romans would have been immediately aware of the hot springs, their importance to the local Dabuni tribe and their deity, Sulis, that presided over them. The Romans believed that the deities they encountered were the same as those belonging to their own pantheon, and different in name only. As the empire expanded, the Romans paired their gods by their similarities to those of the local deities, a process termed by Tacitus as Interpretatio Romana. Rule in an empire, built up of many different tribes and nations, each with one or more cult, required a sensible and pragmatic approach to religious tolerance. This approach to regional beliefs was brought about by the Roman recognition of syncretism of their own deities, with the Greek pantheon and gods associated with natural phenomena. Syncretism may have initially been to reassure the local people when entering sacred sites, and also to put the superstitions of their own military at ease. Individual soldiers wanted to appease local deities. Evidence of this could be found at Carlborough, Northumberland, where dedications were given to the deity Coventina. Syncretism of names may have been to present a personal relationship between the colonial and the colonised nations. Certain customs would have been familiar to the local inhabitants and Romans, in a world where the unknown was feared and the act of ritual all important. Both recognised that the gods could be malevolent or benevolent, and needed to be appeased or invoked by the votive offerings. The Romans used the phrase du ut des, meaning I give so you may give. Shrines or temples in Britain, although not built in the same scale as in Rome, and not as common, 
did exist and would have been part of Iron Age culture. Varro, a scholar of the first century, wrote that the Romans were respectful of regional deities and customs, although this only appears to have happened to local worship. Religious systems, like Druidism, that had the political ability to influence and unite resistance against the Empire were quickly eradicated, with human sacrifice being banned, possibly to justify it. The initial reaction to syncretism from the Dabuni tribe of Bath is unknown. But as early as AD 50, the Romans had started to construct a large temple and bathing complex utilising the hot springs. The springs were considered to have healing properties and the Romans paired Sulis with Minerva, their goddess of medicine. The joint name and sharing of religious practices in the temple were implemented to help the difficulties in language and culture and to bring social cohesion. Religious tolerance was, however, that of the victor, and syncretism was not benign integration, but rather a colonial act of Roman power. This is evident from the archaeology at Bath. The once open sacred spring was now enclosed within a temple that had been richly ornamented and built in the classical Roman style. Iconography and anthropomorphic statues of mainstream Roman gods were carved in the temple, baths and on the altars. A bronze head of the cult statue discovered in 1727 is purely classical in design and appears only to represent Minerva individually. The priests which served in the temple would have been public officials that came from priesthoods, which were civil offices held by politicians. Worshipping at the temple would have been regarded as showing loyalty to Rome and positions within the cult may have been given to members of the local aristocratic families in reward for their dedication. Within the temple, the cultic hierarchy of Sulis Minerva would have echoed the political hierarchy and ideology of the empire. Evidence on a pediment found during excavations suggests a certain level of local influence contributed to the iconography on the temple's main entrance. The pediment was of classical style, but at the centre was carved a large gorgon's head of a different design. Supporting the head are two winged victories with an owl and dolphin that symbolise Minerva. The gorgon's head is believed to represent Sulis, and with the addition of the classical symbols attributed to Minerva, will represent the syncretism of Sulis with Minerva. Any reservations the local inhabitants had about the huge temple may have been replaced by awe, and the pediment may have aimed to give the impression to visitors of mutual reconciliation between the different societies' religious and cultural practices. There is no archaeological evidence for resistance to syncretism at Bath, those who chose to embrace the cult of Sulis Minerva would have benefited from the small town that grew around the temple and bathing complex. The town became known as Aquasulis, and traders, both regional and Roman, were able to exploit the tourists that came to gain favour from the gods and seek healing from their waters. Aquasulis was not a conventional Roman town, but rather a curative establishment without a basilica, which was administered from the temple. The town's economy would have grown as the fame of the hot waters spread and retired veterans came to settle and establish villas in the local area. And an inscription dedicated by an Arospex to Sulis Minerva indicates how important the cult had become. There were only 60 Horospex at any one time, consisting of high-ranking priests from northern Italy who could read omens and advise officials and emperors. The Horospex engraving is the only known example in Britain, and unlike others on the continent, which are abbreviated H-A-R, was extended to H-R-U-S-P, so that the locals could understand. Epigraphic evidence proves that the local populations worshipped at the temple, although any cultural differences practiced there are unknown due to Roman syncretism. Local inscriptions in Latin appear on memorials and altars dedicated only to Sulis and proves that the worship of the deity as an individual continued to be important. Inscriptions left by Roman high-ranking members of society are dedicated to Sulis Minerva, while people of lower social status appeared to worship both deities as individuals. 
Engravings on pewter curse tablets dating between the 2nd and 4th century AD, which were rolled up and placed into the hot waters, suggest they were written by local Britons because of their poorly spout Latin. These tablets were used to invoke a deity into cursing a person that had wronged the inscriber in some way, in many cases by stealing, and the curse was only lifted when the item was returned. Offerings also placed in the temple waters were coins, pewter vessels, brooches, jewellery and ornaments. Although the majority were Roman in style, many were of local design, suggesting the regional influence and worship. The archaeological evidence is clear that by this period Aquasulis and its inhabitants had become Romanized, with local customs entwined with those of the Empire and their material culture evolving as Romano-British. The syncretism of Sulis Minerva at Bath was a sensible and practical act on the part of the Romans. It aimed to create social cohesion between themselves and the local Britons by expressing the similarities in religious practices and customs. Syncretism was used initially to calm superstition of both societies and gain local trust and mutual respect. Dedicating the temple to Sulis as well as Minerva would have been a way to encourage local support and prevent opposition to its construction. Once completed, the entrance pediment would have represented mutual syncretism, but local worshippers would also have been seen as expressing allegiance to the new Roman rulers. Loyalty may have been rewarded to local tribal leaders, with positions within the temple making them part of the political system. Although the concept of temple worship may have been familiar to the local inhabitants, the scale, architectural style and foreign deities were not. These aspects dominated any local religious influence or originality, and were symbolic of Roman colonial imperialism. Sulis became Roman, and as local practices and culture changed, the local inhabitants were assimilated into the empire. Roman superstition and tolerance influenced syncretism but the aim to slowly dominate and control different religions enabled it to succeed, and the tribes willing to embrace it were the quickest to benefit from what Roman society had to offer. The syncretism may have transformed Sulis, but the deity had survived. Thank you for watching this video by Simple Archaeology. Please subscribe for future archaeological topics.